In this video, um, let's explore, uh, a, first of all, a twisted torus and render it in brushed uh, metal, say like a brushed brass here, and place it in a photo box on a uh, small pedestal. Um, so the, the result is kind of nice. Oops. Um, and quite easy. So let's get started. Um, what we're going to do is say File New, Reload Startup File if you have something else going, otherwise just launch Blender. I'm using 2.79 still. Still waiting for the, the final version of 2.8 to come out. And let's see. What we're going to do is leave this cube as our base and put the twisted torus. And it's, it's quite easy. What we're going to do is hit Shift A and go into Mesh, Math Function, XYZ Math Surface. And before I touch this, I don't want to touch it because over on the left here, I want to change this one under this Operator Presets and go up to Twisted Torus and notice it's way too huge. So, first step, let's scale it down. So, on your keyboard, hit S for scale, and then just drag your mouse in order to make it a more reasonable size. Yeah, something like that. Then hit number one on your keyboard, and number five to go into front ortho. And R for rotate, and 90, enter. And then just grab the blue manipulator for the z-axis and pull that up just to touch the edge of the cube, and center it on the cube. Hit number three to check it from the other direction on the right side, and move that to the center. Great. <clears throat> Let's see. Next, let's place a plane underneath it. So I'm going to left click to put the 3D cursor, then Shift A, Mesh Plane. And let's scale it also. I'm going to just put that right under the cube. So I'm going to hit S10, Enter, and rotate around or orbit around the camera between us and the torus. Um, what I'm going to do is raise these back two corners to create this uh, enclosed uh, photo box. So tab into edit mode and then hit the letter A to deselect. Choose the edge selection um, option here down in the middle of the three buttons and then right click the back corner, hold shift, right click to add to the selection this back corner and zoom out. Now we're going to extrude this upward on the z-axis, so hit E and then Z and pull your mouse and then left click to set it. Uh, the torus is a little bit uh, low poly. Let's go back into object mode here. So I'm going to right click and then click shading smooth over here. Alrighty. Now let's set up the camera, and we'll set up the light, and set up the material. So first of all, I want to lock the camera to the uh, viewport shading, or viewport. So I'm going to hit the letter N, and turn on lock camera to view, and then hit N to get rid of this menu, then zero to see through the camera, and let's set the Y resolution to 2200. And I'm going to orbit down a little bit, pan down by holding shift and zoom in a little bit. Okay. Now as long as the torus is selected, go over to the materials orb, which is to the right of the triangle here. And up before I forget, at the very top, choose Cycles Render, and then 
click New, and instead of Diffuse, why don't we choose Principled BSDF. And I'm going to take the metallic value and drive that up to 1. And because I don't want it perfectly mirror-like, I want it to have sort of a brushed metal look, I'm going to put the roughness to oh, about 0.4 or so, something in there. <clears throat> Great, so all we have left next is to set up the light. So I'm going to hit 0 to get out of camera view and right-click the light and the properties are already highlighted. And let's go to Spotlight, click Use Nodes, and that brings up the strength here. Um, let me just pull this up a little bit and view it from a couple of points of view to make sure that the light is hitting. Let's see, number one is good. Number three is good. Uh, number seven is the top view, and that's good. Okay. So, um, let's see. Let's put that up at 2,000 for starters, and then we'll take it from there. In order to see how this is going, I'm going to hit zero for our camera view and then come over next to the object mode and click rendered for your viewport shading. And okay, so let's it's starting to shape up pretty well. We're going to increase the power and let's put some color in here. So I click the white uh, box here and bring it into oops, I'm sorry, I didn't want to color the light, I wanted to color the object, so bring that back to white. <clears throat> Coming back to solid here, right click the object and over here base color, click that and go ahead and choose a golden color in here. <clears throat> now let's go back to rendered and click the lamp in the outliner and increase the strength a little more, 3000. It's looking better. 3500. And <clears throat> because of the shininess of the object, uh, from experience, I know there are going to be fireflies, little white speckles after we render this. Um, so over here on the uh, click the camera, and this is the rendering menu, come down to sampling. And let's up the sampling on this to 250. So where it says render, click on that and make that 250. Enter and clamp in direct down here. Make that one. <clears throat> I'm going to center this up a little bit more by clicking shift and the middle button and pan over except in rendered mode it's having trouble, so back to solid. And, hmm. So I right-click on the torus, right-click holding shift on the cube, and then I can move them both this way, or I could move the camera either. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to hit F12, and start rendering this. And let me hit pause and it'll take a couple of minutes. Okay, um, that took seven minutes and 12 seconds to render. And, and that's that's the look here. So hit F3 in order to save the image or come down to the menu item image, save as image, and name it, in this case Twisted Taurus, dot ping, and it's going in documents here. <clears throat> then to get out of the rendered view, hit escape, and 
try another object then, leaving the same setup. So I'm going to right click on the torus, hit X, delete, and then shift A, mesh, math function, XYZ math surface, and over here under operator presets, come over here and pick out another one. Um, Let's see what that becomes. Zoom out, not a lot. It's a helix. Um, let's take another look. I'm going to hit X, delete. Left click your 3D cursor and it'll place it sort of, sort of in that area. Control, I mean, I'm sorry, Shift A, mesh, math function, XYZ. And <clears throat> okay, that's a helicoid, quite all that said. And let's see what we can do with that. In this case, it's very thin object, so I want to. Um, immediately add some thickness to it. Um, let's smooth it here. Click smooth and add a go over to your modifier wrench, add modifier and solidify and dial up your thickness to give it a little bit of yeah, thickness here. And I'm picking up these curves are not quite as smooth so I'm going to apply that and add another modifier, subdivision surface, and that's good. Um, I could take it up to two, I guess. Okay, and apply that, and then come over to your materials again, new. I'm going to stick with the metal theme, so I'm going to go into principled shader again, dial metallic up to one. And, oh, let's try a different color this time. And because the light is set and all the other settings should be good to go, let's take a peek at it, though, here in rendered viewport shading. Um, <clears throat> right, I want to add a little roughness so I can uh, reflect back some of the surrounding light better. Because remember, the world out here is, is very dark, so if it's totally mirror-like, it's just going to reflect that darkness. And in fact, I'm going to click on the world here and darken it some more and take a look at that. Okay, um, so basically that's it. Play with your light, play with different shapes, um, and do a variation, maybe uh, four or five, six pieces. And that's it. Take care.